previously on productioncrate.com. I'm going to make sure not to move this because I want the back of our 3D muzzle flash to be right in the center of this composition. This should look like a 3D muzzle flash from all angles. Our footage for this tutorial is extremely silly. <laughs> I'm just gonna move through frame by frame and just try to make it match. Go away, I'm trying to make a tutorial. I kind of don't want this muzzle flash to be on a light and transfer mode. I want it on an add transfer mode. So let me just go ahead and, oh no, oh no, I can't change the transfer mode. Fine, what do you want? Adrian, it's me. Oh my God, I'm so sorry, I, I didn't know. What's wrong? I can't, I can't do this. I just feel like I don't even know who you are anymore. What? That's ridiculous. I'm Adrian Jensen from ProductionCrate.com. See, that's the problem. I don't know where ProductionCrate.com ends and Adrian begins. I just can't handle this anymore. Baby, baby, no. Goodbye. Just know I'll never stop loving you, Adrian. Loving me? You never loved me. You killed my father. Adrian! I did not kill your father. But I know who did. When I last left you, we had just finished making this 3D muzzle flash and we have it composited very nicely. So now what we need to do is take this to the next level. We are going to be using trap code particular today to finish off this effect. So if that's not okay with you, go ahead and leave your negative comment now. So I'll start by animating some shells being ejected from the gut. I'll just turn everything else off for now. And I gotta head over to production crate and let's find I believe the action in horror and we'll bring up 3D action. See what's in there. Yep, this is where the shells are. So we can choose any of these shells that we think matches what we're trying to do. I say one of these long ones. I like the uh, angle this one is spinning at. So I'll just go ahead and download it. I'll bring that into my composition. That's going to be my shell. So first I need somewhere for the particles to emit from. So I'm going to make a new light and I'm going to make the cone angle 15 degrees. I don't need any feather or anything and I'm gonna call the light emitter okay and I'm getting this warning because I don't have any 3d layers in this scene but I don't need them that's not what I'm using this for so that's fine and while I'm here I'm also going to click layer come down to transform while I have this light selected and auto orient and I'm going to turn that off because I do not find that useful okay so now I can hit P on the keyboard is that a position keyframe I'm gonna track backwards instead of forwards because in the beginning I can't really see the slide as well as I can at the end. So I know when you're moving small things like lights and no objects around, sometimes it helps to lock your footage so you don't accidentally select it. Now it's impossible to select. So I'm just going to take this light emitter and I'm going to try and tie it to this slide here. And now I'll just keep hitting page up and page down to travel forward and back individual frames. And one by one, I'm going to just animate this by hand because just like in the previous video, this is pretty much going to be untrackable. On frames like this, where you just see the top of the gun and you're not seeing that slide at all, I'm actually moving the emitter to the edge of the gun instead, because that way I won't have to rotoscope the gun out. See, that's uh, called being smart. Okay, and now that I have those position keyframes in, I need to add some orientation keyframes. Make sure that this light is pointing away from the gun. And it can be kind of confusing to orient lights, but just do your best. This is why we turned the auto orient off, because if we didn't, we wouldn't have so much control over the orientation of the light. It would just be pointing at another layer, which would be way harder to animate. Okay, that's good enough for me. So now I need to make a new layer. It's going to be a solid layer and I'm going to call this one particular and I'm going to use Trapode Articular, which is a third party plugin, but in my opinion, it is a necessary third party plugin. And I think if you're serious about After Effects, you probably should have this. So we're going to change our particles per second to 50 because 100 is a little extreme. We're going to change the emitter type to a light. And as you can see, it should start emitting. And now um, we definitely want to start making this look 
more like a, a stream of particles that's falling down. So I think we need to change our direction to directional so it'll actually respect our light direction a little more. And let's turn our emitter size down to zero on all the axes. Right now I'm focusing on the motion of the particles before I start actually working on the look of them. For our physics, we might want to add some gravity, just a, an arbitrary amount until it looks right. And this is looking a lot better. We don't want the velocity to be too crazy because we don't want them shooting all the way out. I want them kind of falling down by Chris's feet. So what we've done here looks pretty good to me. So now let's turn our footage back on so we can see what we're doing. And for our particle type, let's change it to a sprite. And for our texture, we're going to make that the looping shell. It's going to tell us our layer is too big, which is probably good advice, but uh, it is advice we are going to ignore. And now I'm also going to change the timing of it to random loop. So that way, if I turn up the size of these, you can see they're all the same. But if I change it to random loop, now they're not going to be all the same. I should note that if instead you're opting to use bounce physics so that your particles can interact with the ground, then the start at birth loop time sampling option isn't really going to work as well for you. You might want to instead use random still frame. It's not perfect, but it's a little bit better. So now we just need to set some keyframes on the size of the particles so that they match up with the gun. So it, we're kind of going to pretend that they're in the right spot in 3D space when really they're not. So at this point we are now. That looks pretty good. I'll set a keyframe. I don't need very many keyframes, just a few. I'm going to go to the end. Now they clearly need to be bigger. And if I go back to the beginning where I can actually see some particles. Now those are way too big. So let me just turn down the size. And as long as you're close, it should be pretty good. Okay, let's just composite these a little bit better. First of all, we can turn on the motion blur if you want to. You can do it in the comp if you want. Just turn on the motion blur for the particular layer and for the composition and you'll get instant motion blur. You can also turn that back off and just do it in the plugin itself if you want. Under rendering, you can turn on motion blur. Just turn it to on and that gives us way more motion blur. Too much in my opinion, but we can actually control it within the plugin. So right now it's giving us 360 degrees of motion blur. If we wanted to to match what it was looking like for the comp settings and that was 180 but I still thought that was too much I'm going to turn that down to 90 and I think that looks pretty good and then some of these are starting to turn a little bit transparent so another option we have is to turn up the opacity boost just a little bit I just hit Control shift H to hide my helpers which in this case is the light but that'll hide all your layer borders and your null objects and stuff so you can just see what it is you're making so the dark point on these shells looks like it's darker than the actual footage. So I'm just going to apply a levels effect to them and I'm going to bring up my input black point just to kind of fill in those shadows a little bit. And then also they're looking a lot more crispy than the actual footage is. So I'll just add my fast box blur and give it a sub pixel blur like a 0.5. No too much like a 0.2. Just a very very subtle blur and that's going to help incorporate them into the footage a lot better. I'm actually going to highlight the emitter and the particular layer and just pre-compose those. We'll call this shell. And let's drop it to the right place in the layer stack. So the shells, I believe, should be above the flashing, but below the actual muzzle flash. There you go. Now we need to do smoke. So we need another emitter. So I'll make a new light. I'll call it emitter. This one, I don't want to be a spotlight. I just want it to be a point light. So I'll drop that into the scene. And we can actually go into the 3D muzzle flash comp that we made in the last video. Because this, we already tracked the barrel. So this has all the position data we need. So if I just hit P on that, I can just copy that and paste it into the emitter. And I hit Control Shift H to bring that emitter back. That way I'm not doing that work twice. It's already done because we already did it. We worked together. So now I need to find that same muzzle flash clip that we used in the last video. So there's this five star front one here. I'm going to bring that into a new composition and I'm going to chop off that first frame. So in the last video, we used the first frame but did not use any of the smoke at the end. Right now, we just want the smoke. I'll call this composition smoke particle. Okay, so in the main comp, we can bring in our smoke particle, but we can poke its eye out because we don't need to see it. And we'll make a new solid again called particular. 
and we'll apply a particular to it. And now we need to set the emitter type to a light once again. So now these particles are emitting from the light, but I actually don't want them spraying out like this. So I'm gonna turn my velocity to zero as well as my velocity random, distribution and velocity from motion. We can leave the emitter size up. It doesn't need to be zero in this case. So now we wanna change our particle to a sprite. The texture will be our smoke particle. Again, our layer size is big, we already know that. And change the time sampling from current time to start at birth, play once. So these smoke particles are gonna puff out and then just play the clip. So they're very, very small right now. So let's bring up the size. So right now this is just kind of looking like a, like a noisy mess. So first of all, let's bring our particles per second way down, maybe 20, okay? And that's looking better, but the key to making this smoke look good is to add a lot of randomization to it. So let's bring up the size random of these particles and let's bring up the opacity random of these particles. Some of them are more visible than others. That's already looking a lot better, but also twirl up in this rotation menu here and bring up the random rotation. You might not want it all the way up because that looks a little crazy, but give it some random rotation. I think that's really going to help sell it. Maybe I'll add a few more particles, but turn the opacity of them down. And now the last little detail I want to add on this is I want to let the particles kind of blow away in the wind. So under physics, we can twirl down air and just add some wind in the X direction. Cool. We can turn that back on and move it into the proper place in the layer stack. I'd say it goes below the flash, but above the shelves. And it's kind of hard to see, so we can actually add a levels effect to it and we can affect the alpha and we can just try and increase that a little bit. And there we go. We've got our smoke added. If you want some sound effects, that's going to be no trouble at all. Just click over to Sounds Crate and we have a bunch of sound effects and music just chilling, waiting for you to download them. You can navigate to the gun related section and here's tons of them. You might want the assault rifle burst or maybe the machine gun. And I think that's gonna be it from me today. We now know how to make the 3D muzzle flash. We know how to make the ejecting bullet shells. We know how to make the reflected light from the muzzle flash. And we know how to make the smoke being emitted from the muzzle flash as well. So that's pretty much everything you need to do this gunshot effect, I do believe. It's not a very realistic effect. It's kind of silly, but I like it. If you wanna go ahead and subscribe, we'll be coming out with a lot more of these in the future. And that's it. I appreciate your watching. I've been Adrian Jensen and goodbye.